Good afternoon. Welcome to Pink My Glue Confessions. As always, thank you for our viewers that are, are constantly watching our podcast and always giving us good feedback. Uh, my name is Attorney Stephanie garces Stone. It's always a pleasure having you guys uh, join this because we're actually going to be talking about something new that we haven't talked about before. So this week, we're discussing how to eliminate self-sabotage and unlock your potential with the certified uh, women business enterprise, Debbie Pickus, who's an amazing person and knows a lot about this. So we'll uh, jump to her in a second, but I kind of wanted to talk about why we're doing this. So um, in general, we all know that being successful in life is really hard. Everybody's seeking out success. I know there's plenty of books out there. How can I be more successful? How can I be more savvy? How can I be the best at what I do? Um, and CEOs and celebrities alike have cited that winning um, is really a mental game and that reaching a key to success is really um, connected to that mental game. So in this week's Pink Mike Leo Confessions Facebook Live, we're sitting down with Debbie Pickus to discuss um, a little bit more about her background and what her thoughts are on um, some of the topics that we're coming up. Covering today. Uh, Debbie is also an international speaker and founder of Team Fireball, by the way. So, um, also a confidence coach, which I think is wonderful. I could always use that. Um, but I just wanted to give you a, a, brief, a brief introduction. So, um, I'm going to give you my background and you can feel free to share yours, Debbie. But um, it, from what I understand, you coach professional women and their teams with goals of um, really just dissolving limiting. Um, beliefs, really, the limiting beliefs um, and self-doubt, self-sabotaging behavior uh, that really blocks anyone's uh, greatness and steals their opportunities to reach the next level of success. Um, so I, I know you also have a black belt in karate, which is incredible, uh, <laughs> and 25 years in fitness. So maybe you can tell me about that because that's pretty um, impressive. And you bring a unique perspective to the mind-body connection and how to use it as a power source. Um, so combining all of this with your mental health, martial arts, mythology, um, and um, the transformational mindset work, you speak to training uh, tr different groups about training, uh, how to train their employees on the, on the importance of power, um, the power behind building confidence, um, aside from being amazing and a badass, in my opinion. <laughs> so when I focus on your business, it sounds like you spend uh, time with your fiance, um, Bill, I believe, and your puppy, George, and your three grown kids. So please, yes. without further ado, feel free to tell me about your, your bio. And actually, please tell the viewers everything about yourself. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> you kind of said it all. So we're done. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yes, um, I'll start with the family and the personal first. I do have a fiance. He's working downstairs at the moment because, you know, we're all working from home pretty much these okay. days. And I do have a puppy that takes up the whole uh, length of the couch. His name's George. He's 16 months old yesterday. So he's massive. Um, and I do have three grown kids. My oldest is actually getting married in three weeks. Uh, Congratulations. His yeah, I'm very excited. We're very excited about that. So like my brain is sort of on wedding right now, but um, yeah. that's pretty awesome. And then my he's a pilot. My middle one's an entrepreneur. My baby is an interior designer and uh, they're great. And, and, you know, for those of you out there that have children, we know how important it is to, I know, I know you're going to talk about like the legacy and the things that you're going to do, but you know, when they're happy, we're happy. When they feel successful, we're, we feel successful and that's all that matters. Um, so, so that's a bit about me being a parent. Cause that's my, my first thing, even though they're all grown ups, Right. Um, but so Team Fireball, I started Team Fireball um, and I do have a fitness and martial arts background. Uh, I started Team Fireball six years ago, a little over six years ago, about six and a half years ago with my partner, um, who was my operations manager at the time. And it came out of a concept because I owned a title boxing club before I was a partner in a title boxing club. Wow. And yeah. And you know what? I love that workout. It's just an amazing, like, you know, I love kickboxing. Like that's my soulmate workout, you know, things oh, like yeah. that. And, and, um, and so that business itself wasn't a great business model for us, but the concept of bringing teams in to do something physical uh, you know, to get out of their head, but also to have like the mental energy of doing something like that is where that came from. 
when that business wasn't working really well, though, I came up with the idea of team building that was fitness focused and it morphed into some self-defense training, which we did. You know, we worked with groups and companies, not like a big studio, not like a six week program or anything. But what we were doing was we'd go in and do like a 90 minute to two hour training in organizations. Uh, lots of times with the resource group that were the women, uh, you know, if they were working in an office late or something like that. The part about it I loved, though, was the mental side of it. I loved the awareness. You know, I loved that having some confidence um, and feeling powerful helps you show up looking powerful. And that detracts, vic you know, um, becoming a victim. But what I also loved about it was how that translated into other things. And, um, you know, a few years back bef while I before I changed over to what I'm doing now, when I already had Team Fireball, I found this methodology that was all about like mindset and limiting beliefs and how to eliminate them and how to recognize them and change them. Now, it's not like you can go, oh, there's that limiting belief. Boom, poof, it's gone. No, it's not quite like that. It takes, you know, it's a muscle. You have to exercise that muscle. But when you recognize that things are happening or you recognize that something's not working for you, it's time to look inwardly and find out like what's going on in here that I keep ending up in this place or I'm not happy or other people are passing me by. What, you know, because really, yes, you're doing something wrong, but really you're not doing anything wrong. Really, it's you just haven't recognized that you've got these recurring thoughts and these recurring themes that are happening. How I discovered it quickly, I'll tell you, is that years ago, I found myself to be in an abusive relationship where I would hear like, you're fat, you're ugly, you're worthless around money, you're all these things. And you might think that it was spouse or partner telling me those things, but it wasn't, it was me. And right. most people would not think that those kind, that kind of language speaking to yourself is abusive, but my epiphany happened when my daughter, who's now 26, at the time, I imagined her face if I spoke to her the way I was speaking to myself. Right. That really got my attention. Like, I'm still emotional every time I tell this story, and it's been almost 10 years. Um, you know, so many people out there, I, I know women for sure, but I know men do it as well. We have these conversations with ourselves that we would never speak to someone we absolutely adored that way. And we wouldn't want somebody talking to us that way. But yet we we speak to ourselves that way. Why? Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of me like working on this methodology and really understanding that I was basically in a self-sabotaging abusive relationship with myself and I had to change it. Well, it's interesting that you bring up yourself because, you know, um, when you were going there for a second, I thought, oh, I said, you know, I thought you meant you were in one already, like with someone else, like there's another person. But but it, it's interesting to talk about when it's with within yourself and and a lot of that self-doubt those are the types of things i think that everyone deals with even the most successful people will tell absolutely. you absolutely that they've dealt with it deal with it um i don't think it ever goes away i think self-doubt's always going to be a challenge to everybody um but it's how you cope with it right debbie i mean absolutely. i think that's where, that's where you come in as the expert yeah, exactly exactly that's, that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking so thank you for sharing that um and kind of a a background here so it sounds like you you sort of found your, um, let's call it your calling and, and what you wanted to do with this business, how you saw Team Fireball. Now, um, I thank you for sharing your journey, by the way. It's great to even hear from you because you're the person that is successful in preaching about this to others. So it's nice to know that you've also experienced it. But yes. um, what is your like biggest understanding about like and maybe 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 we can demystify what it what does it mean to like mentally bully yourself and how do you deal with it what are some coping tips because i think people think that like you know we can't bully ourselves but i know that we can so could you maybe explain a little bit about that what that looks like and how can someone um kind of deal with it sure so i mean i can't say that i even coined that phrase but i'd heard it before but you know it's Sometimes we fire ourselves up by like, come on, you can do this, you know, don't this, don't that, whatever, you know, and there's, it's different. You have to understand. But like the language that I was using with myself, you know, where I was dissing myself mentally, I was saying out loud these things, you know, again, it's, it's just like the bully at school that like picks on you or calls you names or, or, you know, just it's, it's, it's basically emotionally and verbally abusive behavior 
And that's a bully, right? The thing is, you can't walk away from that bully unless you choose to eliminate that bully. If it's if it's you, <laughs> you know, on a playground, you can just walk away from a bully, hopefully. But right. if the bully follows you around in your head, <laughs> you've got to figure out, you've got to turn the tables, you know? And so um, some, some mechanisms that some people use are first recognize that like when you hear that voice, you know, stop yourself for a second. Is that really true? Like, you know, am I really stupid? Am I really ugly? Am I, you know, whatever it is, am I really not good enough? You know, I mean, I think what happens is so many people I have found the self-doubt that kicks in is like, let's say a woman is is going to apply for a new job or, you know, go maybe decide she wants to be in a relationship again or she's going to start her own business. Well, if that voice in her head is like, you know, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. I mean, this is when I do workshops, we go through a whole series of these inner conflicts because it's I'm right. I'm here. I want to be here. But in the gap is this, but, but I'm not good enough, but I don't know enough, but I don't have a college degree, but I'm not smart enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too this. I'm too that. That voice, whatever that language is, is really, it's just a limiting belief. It's not necessarily the truth. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not true. It's somebody else's voice, you know, a parent, a teacher, a coach, somebody way back when that put these ideas in our head usually from the time we're like, you know, up to about five or six years old, something happens, there's an experience that happens. And we decide it means this other thing. It means, I don't know what I'm doing. It means I'm not doing it right. It means I don't have the skills. It means, and we may, and we decide that it means this thing. And then here's the kicker. This reticular activating system that we have searches for the true the, the evidence to support what we believe. It's like the old story of when you buy a car and then suddenly everybody's driving that car. Everybody didn't go out and buy the car the same day. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely. always been there, but it hasn't been in our purview. It hasn't been in our consciousness because it wasn't important. We filter out so much. But so what happens is if I believe let's just say a dating thing. If I believe there's no good men out there, I'm just going to keep finding jerky guys. And, and, and then when they prove themselves right, I'm going to be like, see, I told you, you know, so there's yeah, this, yeah. Like, this loop of, of thought that happens that we look only for the evidence to support our belief. And so then of course it's like, it comes true again because we're only looking for that. So it's what, almost like so. So are you really? So you're saying like sorry, that's no, no, no. You're saying, is that something that we? And it's so funny that you said that because it's almost like um, people that are having these thoughts. Like dating is a good example, but let's just say I'm like you know, there's no good men or something. Yeah. Well, is, is it? I'm so busy looking for like something to back up my theory so that I can say, "Told you," as opposed to saying, "No, let's be positive. Let's not think that way." Let's think about how many good men there are or something like that. Well, it's many good, you know. right. There's different ways to do it. Right. So the thing is, what happens is that our subconscious is going to always guide us to our, where our beliefs are. It's always going to go that way. It's programmed like a scud missile is programmed. Mm -hmm. And so until you can look at those beliefs and and there's an exercise we do, which I'll explain in a minute. But until you look at those beliefs and make a decision that, you know, that's really not true. Like some form of the opposite is probably true. Beliefs are just decisions. So you can make a new decision. And it's usually at the at the top layer, just some form of the opposite. Now, as I work with people, we dig deeper, right? Because there's a lot more underneath it. It's not just as simple as that. But the first step is there's no good men out there. There's a lot of good men out there. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's how you make that simple is like maybe a person themselves has not had that luck. But let's say your next door neighbor has like the greatest guy ever that she's married to. You can look at that and be like, well, obviously there's good men out there because Mary next door is married to one. So therefore they exist. And, and now you're turning your mind into like, OK, they exist. I just maybe haven't been open or, you know, whatever reason. Right. But right. you first have to identify the fact that that belief is, is made up. 
it's just a decision you made God knows how many years ago, <laughs> truly, because you make these decisions when you're four or five, six years old. And then, I mean, you know, would you actually go up to a five-year-old and be like, hey, what are you thinking about this? Oh, okay, I'll just buy that, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, you just, it's just our, our primitive brain at the time doesn't have any idea that it's even making the decision, but it gets embedded. It gets embedded in this is like software up here, right? Yeah. And, and, and so it gets embedded in there. And then all you're looking for all along is the evidence to prove it. You're not seeing any of the other things. And as you get older, the myelin sheets in your brain and the, the you know, the neurosculpting that happens just cements it in. Right. So it's like if you're, if you're 20, you can change your beliefs a little more quickly maybe than somebody who's 70, right? Because they've been thinking this for a long time. So it takes, you know, depending on the person, we can all do it. Right. It just takes some work and some 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 energy. Well, and what what about like in the business department? Because yeah. you know how like this translates not only in your personal life. I know we've talked yes. a little bit about um, the dating and the personal beliefs, but how does this translate into business? Because I know I mean, I know you work with a lot of businesses, so yes. maybe entrepreneurs, perhaps. And I know uh, mothers, spouses, women in business, finding strength and balance can really be like a constant battle. So right. um, outside of that, um, what do you think about uh, like with business? I mean, how does some of the, I guess, what have you found um, are some yeah. facts that, that can impede success in one's business um, when it comes yeah. to the mental, mental state that you're in? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so again, if there's, there's let's, I'm just going to use women because I mostly work with women, not, not okay. exclusively but I mostly do. But let's say there is a woman who is, um, there's an opportunity for her to go get promoted, right? Or, or you know, I mean, I did just actually have a scenario with, with a, a, a group that I worked with, a, a, huge, a huge airline in Chicago. Um, and one woman, at the end of it, it was about leadership success and how you've got to slay that mental bully to unlock your inner leader. And she was so grateful at the end of this talk because she said, I, I literally today thought I was going to have to quit my job because I didn't have the abilities I needed to do this. Well, that was just in her head, you know, because once she learned, like we all have these things that hold us back, sometimes we don't even know that we've got the ability to change it. We're just like, this is how it is there. That, that's it. Right. So the first thing is recognizing that, oh, wait, I'm not alone in this. There are other people that feel the same way. Um, I'm not at the level I want to be. What's going on with me? Like, what are my beliefs? I mean, I always rec I recommend to people to, to reach out to a coach or a, a, a therapist or just whomever, right? A consultant or a friend. Always ask other people if like, am, is this true or am I just a little bit crazy? But ask somebody that's not maybe in your family that also thinks that you're the same way, right? Go outside of that realm. But um, the, the big problem is somebody like that's believing that they're not going to go after the next level job no. or an entrepreneur. Like, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm in the world with other coaches and other business people. And it's, am it's amazing what you hear people like, seeing and doing like you'll see somebody else being successful and it's like well that'll never happen for me i can't do mm -hmm. that they can do it because of this 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 i don't know how to do that and that lack of confidence um that and that self-doubt prevents you from making a powerful decision and sticking with it because you're going to hem and haw and second guess or you're not going to make the decision or you know you're going to hesitate on making a decision you're going to play really small because you don't think that you can you know, get above that level. Um, and there's that whole thing too, is like, everybody thinks they're the only one. I mean, I'll do talks and it's like, now not everybody in this room feels this way, but there's some of you that know that this is you. Like you are not feeling confident when you walk in a room, you're not feeling this, you're not feeling that. And you'd rather sit in silence than actually reach out and get some assistance because you don't believe you could even change it. You know, people don't think it's possible to change. They right. think this is where I am. That's what it is done. It'll never be X, but that's not true. You can completely change it. I love that attitude. And I love that the fact that you're talking about like that. And everyone 
um, expresses it, but they everyone might feel it. And um, I know in business, I know, and in, this is my personal experience, is that you know self doubt is always there. Uh, there's other people too that sometimes will influence the way that you feel. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And I think, I think that's also really powerful because I think um, one of the things that I was thinking about before we started our podcast was about how self-doubt and some other outside forces, whether that's a colleague or a, a friend or your, or your own thoughts, um, are really the biggest enemy um, yes. for some of, the, for some of the, um, the goal setting and the goal achieving. And, and it's fun like hearing this because I think, OK, there's so many people that have all these great goals, you know, and they but they think about why they can't do it. No, yeah. I could never do that because of X, Y, Z. I mean, I think we're all guilty of that. And, yes. um, you know, out of curiosity, what do you think of like like pertaining to like self-doubt and lack of confidence? Like how destructive can it be? I mean, in your oh, experience, it's very destructive. Well, well, it, for example, you know, let's just say, you know, like you're saying I have self-doubt sometimes too, you know, so there might be, and I'm just to pick, you know, you're right here. So I'm just going to use, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the story at all, but, but you know, I mean, if, if you think about like, Oh, maybe I want to open a second office or maybe I want to hire a staff or maybe this, or maybe that. And then suddenly it's like, but I, I'm not great at managing people. And I'm not, and I don't know, again, I'm not, Stephanie has not told me any of this people ignore what I'm saying. I'm just making it up. <laughs> But I've heard these things from other people, right? Like, I don't know how to do that. Or I'm not good with, I'm not good with money. I'm not good with staff. I'm not a good manager. So something that could help somebody scale or uh, grow or, you know, make more money or, or whatever, they might not do because they don't think they know how. Right. And they're too embarrassed maybe to ask somebody for the help or say, like, I'm not really sure how to do this. You know, I'm not good at this. Um, I mean, I personally don't love managing people. Um, I, I really don't. And I'm sure that I could learn to do it and and do really well if I decided like, I because once you make a powerful decision, then suddenly you just things start popping, right? Yep. My partner, Bill, is great with it. Like he's really organized. He's a project manager. You know, those are the kinds of things he does. And right now he's back in the corporate space, but eventually he'll come back into the business and I will let him manage a team and I will do the visionary, you know, speaking on stage and all the stuff that I do because of my insane personality. And I'll let him handle like, you know, the, the linear things and those kind of, and, and the other people management things. Cause he is great at it. What I would say to people is like not expanding or not stepping out of that comfort zone because you have doubt is, you know, you're holding yourself back. Now, maybe you don't take it all on yourself. Maybe you hire somebody who like, I've got a guy who's great with people. Well, if I want to hire a staff, I'll first find a person who's really great with people yep. and let them manage the people, you know, kind of thing while I do yep. the thing I'm good at. Because I really think also sometimes, especially as an entrepreneur or a solo or whatever it is, we're not going to be good at everything. You know, you got into law for whatever reason that you like doing that and that you're good at doing it. And you don't want to take on these 20 things over here that are going to cost you time and money because it's going to take you three times as long to do it, you know. And so, like, you should be loving 80 to 90 percent of your work, I believe. The stuff you don't like, delegate. I don't know how I got on that tangent, but I did. <laughs> no, you're right, though. I mean, honestly, as the years have gone on, um, I've learned this by trial and error and actually delegating the things that you do not like, I believe, makes you happier. Yes, um, you absolutely. Know, and people will say, well, couldn't you just do it yourself? And, you know, yes, you can. But, you know, happiness, it really does influence your thoughts. I mean, everything is connected. Everything. Like, I think I've learned that the hard way in like saying, no, I'm going to do it this way. And then it, and then it didn't work. And then I thought, oh, let me try another way. And then it works. And then it's like, wow, I actually am much more happier than I was because I made yes. decision. And yeah, like the self doubt thing is interesting too, because there's so many people, I think yourself included that like will support your journey. Even when you doubt yourself, there's yeah. so much you, you know, and that's really, really powerful. So uh, for the viewers, make sure you surround yourself, right? Right. With the people that support you because 
that has everything to do, I think, with this. Your oh, success. it's well, yeah. But <laughs> you're the average of the five people you hang around with most, right? So if you're hanging around with a bunch of people who are downers or who aren't supporting, like you've got a vision, you know, of something amazing you're going to do, and they're all like, "That's not going to work," and you don't, you know, I mean. Yes. Family's family and we've got to love them. But but I, like one of the skills that I have created is when, you know, if, if not just family, but anybody coming into my life that they're going to stay in my life. Right. They're not people I'm getting rid of. I imagine like in the Batman movie from God 20 years ago where he just talked into a thing and he said shields and then all the shields went up on his car. <laughs> like I visually see shields going up and it's like you could talk. I hear it. It's not getting in here though. You know, like, I mean, sometimes we need a tool, whatever it is for everybody. That's what I use. Or I imagine a glass block wall, you know, like it's bouncing off, right? Yeah. Like not getting in because we have to protect ourselves. Absolutely. And I wanted to just kind of do a recap real quick for those of you that are just joining us. We have a couple of you viewers that are watching. Um, my name is attorney Stephanie Garcia. <laughs> I'm the owner of Garces Law Firm, where we help people prepare for the unexpected, um, especially in, in the event of an unexpected absence. Uh, we also do real estate and civil civil work. So if you are looking for um, someone local or even someone that will actually answer to your texts and calls, please give me a call. Because I always tell people we actually text our clients and call them. So if you need our assistance, please feel free to reach out. And as always, if I can't help you, I certainly will send you in the right hands. Um, but today I'm here with Debbie Pickus, who's amazing uh, CEO and founder of Team Fireball and a certified women enterprise business. Um, <laughs> and that's one of the things that you, know, you corrected me on that, but I, I really appreciate that because I want to make sure people understand what you're doing. Um, yeah. And and we're talking a lot about uh, Debbie's passion. She's very passionate about um, helping others, especially with their business and their self-doubt and things that are to me, it's clear what well, it seems like we're in our own way sometimes. And so your experience today is is really appreciated. Um, and we're talking today about how to eliminate self-sabotage and unlock uh, your potential. Um, that is something that is really important because I think people don't realize they even have potential if they're so clouded in, in self-doubt. Um, so if you missed last week's episode, we talked about the benefits of yoga and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, with the, uh, she was a yoga instructor, but also a K through 12 school psychologist, Jessica Sharp. It was really good. So you can catch up on that uh, on our Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. Um, so we welcome people here to watch on Tuesdays, talk about different things that we're discussing, um, things that are very real. That's not just about the law and stuff that actually you may want to share with your family, or perhaps they would hope you learned something that maybe you didn't know about or even didn't think about today. So thank you for all of you that have been watching um, and even watching after the show. So I have a couple questions from a couple of viewers here um, that kind of popped in. One of them is... Um, why do people self-sabotage? And I think this is a good question because I do wonder that what, why is it? Is it because that's what we're conditioned to think or where does this even form? <laughs> right. Well, so again, like our, our, our neural pathways, when we're, I'll, I'm just going to give you like the, you know, bullet point neuroscience, but when we're born, we're born with a hundred billion neurons but only 25 billion synaptic connections. So we haven't like the neural pathways haven't happened yet. And then, so by the time you're five or six years old, basically every single experience you have, everything gets recorded. That's where your memories come from. Right. But depending on the quality of those experiences, you might have an experience where you make a decision. And I always use the example of like the first time you encounter a dog right? Because I'm a dog person. I think you're a dog person. I think I, I heard a dog over there. <laughs> yes, he was Dogs funny. rock. But um, so if the first time you experience a dog, you know, it's like you're going along in the stroller, your mom's pushing you, a dog comes up, he tickles you. You're like, hey, hey, hey. you know, it's like dogs are cool, right? This four legger thing yeah. is pretty cool, right? But if by some chance, the first experience you encountered was a dog attack or something scary, you might make the decision that dogs are dangerous. Right. And every single time that young person encounters a dog again, even if the dog is friendly, they're going to interpret the way the dog moves or the way that the dog looks at them or, or, you know, the sound the yeah. dog makes as dangerous. Yeah. So again, we're looking for the evidence to support our decision as early on as that. And right. then we grow, it just goes, it gets deeper, 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 more ingrained. So with self-sabotage, 
it's again, one of those beliefs somewhere in there, maybe the belief is I'll never be successful no matter what I do, or I'll never amount to anything or, you know, um, nothing ever works out for me. It could be any something that happened as a kid that you, we decided meant this thing. Right. And so then what happens is our brain, which is programmed like a guided missile until you change it, is going to make sure to sabotage anything that might produce that success or that making it or that thing that the person is trying to do. Because the belief is ingrained in there, it's never going to work out. They're never going to be successful, whatever it is, right? Like, I mean, we all have different ones. And again, when I work with clients, we like dig down to find out what they are. Because it's usually not just one thing. There's a bunch right. of things. Right. But, but the interesting thing about this, which fascinates me, is that one or two or three things that are closely related, that is the lens from which you view everything in life. Everything. I mean, I have a client now who's got this, there's never enough. It's just, there's never enough. And it doesn't matter what we look at. Not enough time, not enough money, not enough this, not enough that. And, and, and she, every week I talk to her and she cracks up because I catch her with, there's not enough. Or I'll ask her a question. She'll, there was not enough. And then we both crack up because it's in there, right? And so until you do the work of that new powerful decision, like I said, of there's always enough time. Or of course, I'll, things work out for me. Some things work out for me. Maybe things always work out for me. It might not look the way I thought it should but things always work out for me. Mm -hmm. And so you have to start like changing the brain, but then you have to find the evidence to support the new decision. And that's where a lot of people don't do it. They say it like, oh, positive thinking. Of course it works out for me. Huh? But if you don't actually find that evidence and, and really start changing those neural pathways, it the, the work doesn't work, right? Because you're going to still find the evidence to support the old thing. And then as soon as it happens, like, there it is. See, I knew this wasn't going to work. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, you know what this reminds me of? This is, a, this is a horrible analogy, but for some reason, this reminds me of when someone's on a weight loss journey. Yeah. You know, the trainer tells you, you get to stick to this workout regimen or this meal plan. Um, and if you fall off, you won't get the result that you want. It's so yeah. easy to fall back into eating poorly, not right. working out, you know, falling back into your bad routine. So it's like, yeah. it's almost like habits, right? Like you have to develop these habits and, and, and they're new habits, but yeah. they're almost like, you have to keep feeding the habit. Other, otherwise, you, your habit gets lost. And then there's no right. you go back to what you know <laughs> or right. you do. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. The thing is, this is what I say to like your comfort zone. Our old habits, even if things weren't working, right? Even if we're miserable, like I'm miserable because I'm 30 pounds overweight or I'm miserable because, you know, I keep like getting back into debt or, you know, whatever it is, right? It, or I keep finding the bad guys, women, whatever. Yeah. The thing is though, yes, unless you change the neural pathways, unless you really like make the powerful decision of I'm not available for anything else, but this new decision, I'm not available for anything else. Like it's really intense. That, those old habits, they're like a comfy blanket, you know? They're like the pair of shoes you slip in or sweatpants. Yeah. Like yeah. this is so comfortable. And even though it's taking you back to a habit that you, a place you don't want to be, and even though you may then beat yourself up and be emotional because here I am, I'm back in this place again. There I am. You know, I mean, that cycle is brutal, but it is, it's comfortable. It's like slipping under the covers when the alarm goes off in the winter and you don't want to get up, you know, it feels, like oh, I know. It feels I good, know. even though you're feeling guilty about it. Right. But it feels good. Absolutely. And so it takes, it takes effort to change, but it's also like, you have to, you have to have a view of like, what will it be like when, like feeling into what's it going to be like when I change this habit, I make this new powerful decision, I achieve this that I've been trying to achieve for so many years because now I believe in myself. Like I've seen it happen, not just with my clients, but group coaching programs and places where I'm working with other coaches. And I see people like, oh my God, I remember when you were here and now you're here. You know, I mean, I'm an example of it because I, completely have transformed myself and my life and my beliefs and all these things um, from where I was, you know, five, six, seven years ago. 
and 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 more recently even you know because i'm continually doing the work and i'm continually seeing how the work works so it's you know it's it's amazing work is really what it is it's ph phenomenal because it's really not as difficult as people think it is and, and speaking of that i want to talk a little bit about your results and can you share with us you know without uh violating anyone's privacy yeah. uh, full of results that you've seen from clients like you know like you know, you could just give brief examples, but I'm curious, I mean, what kind of transformations have you been a part of and what do those results look like? Yeah. Oh, so amazing. Um, and thanks for asking. I, um, well, I did mention the one woman that basically was going to quit her job. You know, I mean, when, you know, I got that in like a, a chat text and when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, like it was so heartwarming to know that somebody actually thought she was going to have to quit her job that day and that that changed yeah. her mind. Yeah. This is like a 45 minute talk. This wasn't even like the full work. It was just a, <laughs> it was just like a PowerPoint conversation, you know, where I was teaching sure. some stuff. So it's like if that happens in that time, um, I have a client that that basically has has more than 10 times uh, her rates that she was charging like she and, and, and she's continually adding to her rates because she's starting to recognize like she was she was just giving away a, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and now she's just like, no, I know what the, you know, people understand their value and their worth. Mm -hmm. They're doing this, you know, they're not, they're playing bigger. Um, I have another client that started her own firm. I mean, she's, she's, uh, uh, was a recruiter and decided to go off on her own and start her own firm. I have another client who, um, she actually within a couple months of working with me, her, she made her entire uh, sales goal for the year within a couple of months and ex far exceeded the year before. Um, she actually, we just, she just reinvested to, to, to work together for another six months. Um, I've, I've seen amazing things. People have written their books. People have like, uh, there's a woman, I, she's not my client specifically, but, but she's in this work with me. Um, I mean, she went from, she barely doing us a, a uh, like a ten um, a six figure year to she's on route to make a million dollars. I mean, she literally like you know, it's it's just crazy. But it's it's all in here. It's, yeah. I mean, yes, you can't just sit around and be like, all right, I've made a new decision. I'm going to sit on my couch and like eat bonbons and wait for it to happen. I mean, there's work, right? There's work to do. <laughs> yeah. But it's but once you change, once you make a powerful new decision about, and again, it's not a decision to do. Okay, I want to really clarify this because a lot of people think like, oh, okay, so I'm going to make this goal list. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do no that that those things have to happen. But you have to make a decision about. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm making a new decision about the kind of person I want to be. I want to make a new decision about how I'm going to show up. Like, how do I want to show up today on this talk? Well, I want to show up powerfully and I want to show up, you know, um, feeling energized and I want to have fun with it. You yeah. know, I mean, so it's like you make a decision, like, who am I going to be today? And how is who I'm being going to get me, you know, where I'm trying to go and also help others get where they're trying to go? You know, so it's it's really it's just, it's amazing in its simplicity, but yet there's complexity to it, right? It's, it's, yeah. you can do some of it on your own. It helps to have a guide. Yeah, absolutely. And, and speaking of guides, I mean, what are some resources that our viewers can look to um, aside from your services, yeah. books or websites, um, anything that you would suggest? I'll tell you, I, I'm a firm believer in, um, there's, there's a few people out there like Joe Dispenza is, you know, on YouTube, you can find some amazing things like Mind Valley, uh, that it's um, Vishen Likani has a lot of personal development. Joe Dispenza is a lot of brain change. He's really interesting. I mean, he's like a real neuroscientist. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, it's really, again, who you surround yourself with, you know, can you can you work in, you know, in a, a, a resource program or a coaching program or or just, you know, um, meetup groups or, you know, I know a lot. I mean, I know you've got a wide range of, of types of clients, um, but just 
any personal development. I mean, there's tons of books out there. There's Audible, right? If you don't like reading, you can listen. There's YouTube things, um, just things that are that are uplifting, you know, in whatever way you want to be uplifted. Um, the Miracle Morning is a book that I I got and read, and um, I've actually been there. There's a Miracle Morning Club room on Clubhouse. I don't know if anybody is in your world is in Clubhouse, mm -hmm. um, but I try and go to that room just about every day. Um, there's just kind of a stacking of habits. The first one is silence. The second one is affirmations. The third one is is visualization. The fourth one is exercise. Then there's reading, and he calls it scribing because he calls them the savers. Uh, it's journaling, but you know, it's 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 doing these things like, and it doesn't have to be waking up early, but mm -hmm. you know, just like having a morning ritual or having an evening ritual before you go to bed, so that when you wake up, you're not scrambling. You know, it's just kind of like setting yourself up to be powerful. And I know like a lot of people have young kids and, you know, they're taught, you know, you don't have to do everything for forever. Right. I mean, even the savers thing from Miracle Morning, which I really love it. I don't you could do it for one minute for each thing. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes of each thing. It doesn't have to be an hour of each thing. You could just, you know, and it doesn't have to be everything every day. I think what I would say is the most important thing, like you mentioned the trainer that says, if you don't do this, do something, make a decision to up level in some way, whatever that looks like to you. It might mean listening to music you really like and dancing. You know, it might be taking a walk in the in outside in nature. It might mean, you know, just taking a cat nap during the day. It might mean do it working out for 15 minutes, you know, three times a week, and that's all you do. But it's just anything you make a decision that I've decided to get healthy. I've decided to be more successful. I've decided to earn this much. I've decided to get an estate plan. You know, I've, yeah. I've decided, you know, to, to manage my finances, whatever it is. Once you make a powerful decision to do it, that's your first step right there. You make a powerful decision. The resources, the people, everything you need once you make that decision is just, it's literally going to show up right in your face. <laughs> it just happens. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm a big reader uh, myself. And I was, I started reading the book Atomic Habits. Have you read that? Oh, one? yeah. I listened on Audible. That's incredible. Oh, man, it's good. It's, it's good. stacking. It's stacking, which the Miracle Morning is the same thing. It's stacking some habits to make them even more powerful, you know? Right, and, and I think I, it was so interesting. It kind of talks about the, and it's actually kind of similar to our topic about, um, he references a lot how as people, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like if I don't work out for an hour every day or every other day, then, um, then I failed at the habit. As right. opposed to like, you know, I woke up and I did meditation for, um, yes. minute, and then I had an apple and that's yes. how or something like whatever the whatever the exactly case. no you're exactly right yeah it, it's so like elementary but yet complex because it makes you think about it a little bit different so I appreciate you I'm gonna make a um I appreciate you talking about that because I'm gonna make a note of that to to, to read that one but I did yeah. hear book I haven't read it but for the viewers uh, if you're looking for a read or you don't like to read Audible is a great way to Love Audible uh, I think Audible I think personally like audiobooks and stuff like that can still count as like you're reading for the because you're, you're learning something new so I think you know for, for people agree. that don't want to read but or don't have the time sometimes they're on the train or something right they're amazing but um yeah. Debbie thank you so much for your information today if anybody wants to contact you uh where can they contact you I think it's best if people email me. Um, it's yeah, there it is right there. Debbie dash mm -hmm. at com. I mean, people can find me on LinkedIn and stuff. I think I sent, gave you guys my socials, but, or if they even just go to my website and hit the contact us. But if you're going to reach out to me, just put this broadcast, you know, put Stephanie's name in, in the subject line or something just so I catch it because a lot of stuff goes into it goes all over the place. Like I get, I get hit up for, with a lot of people for strange things. Let's not even go there, but <laughs> I just get pitched a lot. So I really want to know that somebody's coming to me from you, you know, and then I'll make sure to reach out. Absolutely. I, when I do a complimentary, like 30 minute phone call. Like if somebody's got questions, if they're like, well, I've, I'd like to do this, but I don't know if I can afford it or I don't know if it makes sense or whatever. Let, just let's we'll set up something and and we just have a conversation there's no pressure to it it's just really cuz if i don't think i can help you i'm not going to try and sell you anything i mean i'm not going to try and ask you to work with me cuz i don't it doesn't benefit either of us right 
Absolutely. I, I totally um, am on board with that. I do agree with what you just said. If you're better off telling someone, hey, I can't help you, but here's a good resource. Like yep. that in itself could be very valuable as well. So exactly. uh, thank you so much, Shabby. It's so great talking to you. Thanks for having and, me. Uh, I mean, I personally didn't even know that um, there was such a need for this area. I mean, I've heard of it, but to know that there's like in, in like the professional setting or corporate work, even individuals that are mm. constantly working on on this and, and looking for help I, it's great to know that there's someone that's actually dedicated their career to that so thank you for sharing your information yeah, absolutely i know i love working in the corporate workspace like with teams or business resource groups or women's groups or whatever if people just want even a speaker to come in and do like a training or it can be virtual or in person we're we're in the illinois area <laughs> um we're, we're we're actually we're neighbors but um sort mm -hmm. of, kind of but uh yeah just any questions, people can reach out. And I, I really appreciate the time today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you to all our viewers for joining Debbie and I today. We encourage you to not wait to speak to someone about your uh, planning on uh, working your self-confidence or your retirement if you're looking for help um, for that regarding, you know, your assets and stuff that please uh, feel free to call me because you want to start now and not later. Like very similar to what we're talking about. All of that is really uh, planning and just being the best version of yourself. So thank you so much for that. Um, and as always, I invite our viewers to watch here on Pink Mike Legal Confessions uh, to talk about our next topic, which you'll have to see what that is um, coming up. But we do offer free consultations in English and in Spanish for anyone looking for legal help. We're always using this platform to educate people and to really just take time out of your day to really help you learn something that you uh, may not have learned otherwise. So um, thank you again, Debbie. Anything that you need, you can contact me, but I do hope to continue um, you know, having you speak because I do have maybe a couple of opportunities I think you might be good to connect awesome. with some thank corporate you. people. So um, anyone else that has questions, you can always email us after the show. So thank you again, and I'll see you next week on Pink Mike Legal Confessions. Thank you, guys.